Hello everyone and welcome to JB Designs and Manufacturing's YouTube channel. My name is James for those who uh, don't know or have your first time here seeing these uh, videos. Um, today what we're going to be covering is the third video for the Ender Extender for specifically for the 4.2.2 board uh, for the Ender 3 Pro. So um, what's going to be covered is just creating the firmware uh, for today. So we're going to be going over how to download VS Code, um, how to download the Marlin firmware as well as the configuration files, and then we're going to do a quick edit of the um, the uh, files just to edit the bed sizes um, since that's pretty much the only change uh, that needs to be done for the Ender Extender simply because of the size. So um, that's what we're going to cover. So here we go. So here's what we got to do. First things first, let's go ahead and get VS Code downloaded. So go to your favorite browser and go ahead and type in VS Code. Then you're going to come up here. You're going to click on the link. You can also find the link in the um, description of this video. Go ahead and hit download for whatever system that you're currently downloading is for. Should pop up on your browser if you're using Chrome. And once it's ready to open, you just go ahead and click it open. Accept agreements. Next, next, next. Install. And finish. All right. So, one of the first things that you want to put onto your VS Code, which you're not going to see, well, you can see these two files here. Um, you're not going to be able to see it on yours because it's a fresh copy. But what you want to first is get Platformio. So what we're going to do is go to extensions here, and we're going to simply type in Platformio. And you should see it here. It says Platform IO IDE. You want to make sure you click install. The next thing you want to do is um, the auto build Marlin. Not actually necessary, but I find uh, that this is a very convenient uh, one to add. So auto build Marlin, go ahead and hit install. And then these two things you'll see right here on the sidebar. Um, these two will be used for helping us compile uh, the firmware later. Now, go ahead and minimize that. And in the browser, what we're going to type in is Marlin Firmware. And we're going to go ahead and hit the Marlin, Marlin Firmware Home. I'll also have the link in the description. Okay, once you're at the page... For those who are just um, accessing it immediately, I'm going to have you go to the download. And we're actually going to be going down to where it says the Marlin Nightly Source. And we're going to pick the most recent version, which is going to be the bug, uh, bug fix 2.1.x. Okay. These are the most up to date files. That's why I currently use them. Um, even though if you really, um, want, you can still use the ones above here, like 2.1.1. But these are the ones that have been just recently updated. So this is the ones I use. So I'm going to go ahead and click the zip file. And I'm also going to come over here where it says configurations. I'm going to also click that. I'm going to again click the green and download zip. These two files will download to your downloads folder. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is unzip these to um, if my desktop. I have a file called Marlin on my desktop, which I'm going to um, put these on. So I'm going to go ahead and extract all. Browse desktop Marlin select and extract. I'm going to go back to configurations here. I'm going to do the same thing. Extract, browse, Marlin, select, and extract. Okay. We 
wait for them to finish. And that's finished. Okay. So you should have two files here. The first one we're going to access is the configuration bug, bug fix. So we're going to double click that. We're going to go to config. And then we're going to go to examples. And then we're going to scroll on down to Creality. And then we're going to go down and find the Ender 3 Pro. Now, um, this is the important part of making sure you're checking your um, board type. Um, the one that came with my Ender is not actually the one I use. But I'm just going to do the example of what came with it just for anyone that's going from a stock um, Ender 3 Pro. So the one that I have is actually the 4.2.2 board. So you can see that number right here. Okay. That's going to be the one that we're going to access. Um, just make sure you check and you'll see, you might see a 4.2.7 board or a version one. So we're going to go with the, this one here, we're going to open it up. And there's going to be four files in here that you need to copy. Go ahead and copy. Now that we have it copied, we're going to go right back to the desktop, Marlin. And now we're going to go into the Marlin folder. And we're going to just simply go to Marlin down here. And I'm just going to hit paste. We're going to replace. And now the, all the usable files that we need are currently here. Okay. So go ahead and open up your Visual Studio Code. And we're going to go to File, Open Folder. Find that Marlin folder. I'm going to select. Once you have done that, you'll have all your files here on the left-hand side. Okay. The ones that we want to concentrate on first is the Marlin file folder. And we're going to go down to Configuration H. And this is going to open here. Once you're in Configuration H, what we're going to do is go to Control F. And we're going to type in bed underscore size. For the Ender Extender, it is actually 400 by 400. And then the Z Max is four, sorry, 500. Okay, and that's basically all we have to do for that. Go ahead and go over to Auto Build Marlin. And we're going to go ahead and go up to a little hammer. We're going to hit Build. It's going to give you. Um, four or five different options here. And what we're gonna do is look for the Creality RC256. Okay, the one in the middle here. And we'll go ahead and hit build. Okay, looks like we have success, excellent. So what we will have now is that when we go into the PIO file in that Marlin folder. Uh, we're going to go into PIO. We're going to go to build. We're going to go into here. And in here should be your bin file. Now, once you have your bin file, what you want to do is right click and you're going to hit copy. Now, what you're going to do now is find your SD card that you're going to put your firmware on. And you're just going to simply paste it into the SD card. Now, all you have to do uh, is pop this into the printer. Actually, what I'm going to do uh, what I'm actually going to do is rename this. Let's go to name. And just firmware. Okay. Now all you have to do is take the SD card out, take it to your printer while it's off, 
put it into the SD card slot, and then um, turn it on. And what that'll do is cycle through, install the firmware, and then it should be in working order. Now, if you want to go back and start messing around um, with other settings in your um, in the configuration file as well as, as well as the configuration H, um, there's a lot of different options you can choose if you're going to update it with, let's say, a BL touch, or um, if you have like a filament sensor on it, or a different board or anything else. Okay, so there's a lot of different options you can play with. You can also mess with the orientation of your motors, you know, which direction they go and everything else. So very convenient to use. But that's the basics on how to use this, um, this software, just simply to edit the bed sizes and the height. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Short and sweet. Hopefully that helped you out. Um, if you have any questions about any specifics or if you're having any issues uh, compiling any of the code into for firmware, please leave a comment and I will address them as quickly as I can. But hopefully when it's all said and done, that printer back there is running nice and sweet. I already did some test prints with mine. And sure enough, spot on. Now the next videos that will be coming up are going to be some upgrades I'm going to make to the printer. I've already ordered a few things that I think are going to be necessary, um, such as vertical supports uh, that are going to make it more rigid, as well as pull the vertical uh, struts into 90, 90 degrees, because these are slightly off. So I can only imagine if I'm actually doing a tall print that it will stagger that print slightly so that the layers aren't going to be perfectly straight. So... Got to get that um, taken care of. I've also um, ordered another Z or um, yeah Z rod and set up for the uh, other side. So it's going to be dual Zs running off of this just to make sure that the X um, beam rises up gradually. So and other little odds and ends stuff that I'll be including. So just if you're interested in seeing those things happen, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you're really interested, go ahead and hit that bell so that you know um, that the newest videos are up. So, well, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.